Hey yo, Benishan, what up? Chakra, El Kizero, back with another video. Okay, so check it. Oh, by the way, yes, I'm, I'm feeling myself right now. I gotta represent for Jersey. That's why I specifically have the hat like this. And it's a little bit open, you know? Very Jersey, I represent Jersey. Okay, shout out to Queens where I was born. Shout out to the Bronx where I frequented a lot. But I'm a Jersey boy, okay? Um, specifically Mount Olive. M.O. All Day Marauders. Um, so, also I just want to rein in. This is just my way of reigning in summer. Well, spring, but heat. So, I'm proud to present um, a series that uh, has been a long time in the making. This is my first episode. This is going to be, oh, by the way, this is water. I'm not a drinker at all. Um, a series that I'm still eh, on the name, but it's episode one of Illegitimate Orisha Practices, the series. Um, so this is episode one. This um, is, uh, it's been a pain in the ass to record and put together. But it's a passion project of mine and just as an introduction illegitimate orisha practices is um simply showing you guys or my it's my intention to give you guys the audience shout out california texas florida new york jersey uh chicago um and everybody watching from all across the land give you guys the necessary tools to make better informed decisions for yourself and your Risha journey. Um, I don't speak too much on uh, on Voodoo, 21 Divisions, Big Themo, stuff like that. Um, my channel specifically is made for ultra related stuff. So, um, without further ado, this uh, particular video is about a YouTuber by the name of The Baron. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna make these like a documentary series style. Um, a disclaimer, the information that I, that I like putting out there has nothing to do with these any of these individuals personality. He actually seems like a really sweet guy, um, just with extremely questionable uh, practices and illegitimate insofar as Orisha, okay? So I'm gonna shut up because you guys already know that I can talk about. Okay, so let's begin. So what we're looking at here is um, a YouTuber by the name of the Baron. Um, this is his about page. I try to be as thorough as possible. I am a master tarot reader and spiritual advisor. My mission in this life and the next is to free the hearts and minds of those that are being controlled by dogma and fear. Trust in uh, trust the you in you. So definitely something that I want to touch on right here is uh, basically it's a uh, the I don't agree with dogma is uh, basically a nice way of saying I disregard uh, tradition and I disregard the original ancient ways of doing things um, and so. There's no need uh, for initiations and no need for any of this. And if you see right here in a comment made by him, the energy of the Orishas is your birthright. No, believe in yourself and make it happen. AKA, because I come from African lineage, AKA, I'm black, I have the right um, to bypass tradition and it's in my blood, which is a, lot, a way a lot of people I notice are thinking these days. So... I want to touch on that that subject right there. The whole idea that that I don't subscribe to dogma. I don't subscribe to rules. My spirituality is my personal thing. And as a matter of fact, because I have African ancestry, I automatically um, <clears throat> I have it in my blood, or my ancestors were crowned so i don't need to be crowned um that's definitely a running theme that you'll see in the people that i present to you guys um the idea that there's no need to engage or there's no need to for any kind of initiation be it the beads uh the beads uh, you're receiving your warriors 
uh, receiving any Arisha formally, I mean formally. Um, there's no need to be crowned. There's no need to undergo uh, the labete in in voodoo. All that is man-made. It's man-made dogma. And all those traditions are, are they, they, it's a way to control the people because Santeros and all these people are just after your money. Um, granted, yes, there are wolves in these faiths, uh, but we're not all jerks. You know, not every single Santero, Palero, Babalao, Mambo, Ugan, uh, Brujo, whatever, is a complete dirtbag, okay? Some of, some of us are good, genuine people living simple lives um, and not are not are just all about the money, you know? So it, it's it's horrible to just make a blanket statement. Every Baba Lao is money hungry. Every Santero is money hungry. Every voodoo priestess or whatever is money hungry. That's not the case. Um, but a, a running theme with these people is I don't need tradition. I don't need initiation um, because it's man-made dogma. And I definitely want to do a whole video on, on this, but basically in a nutshell, to say that there's no need for initiation, I can just do spell work with Changu. I want a lover, I can just do spell work with Ochun. And I don't have to have Ochun on my head. I don't, um, I can just do spell work right at home, you know, um, because it's in my blood. The, the problem with that is, in my opinion, it spits in the face of the slaves that went through all the trouble to bring these traditions to the new world, to bring the secrets, to bring uh, the knowledge of the herbs, the osain that it takes to wash the otanes, of, uh, of friggin' having to syncretize their orishas or loa, um, <clears throat> or impungo behind these Catholic saints. For me, it spits in the face of all the slaves that went through all the trouble to preserve their faith uh, because you say it's all man-made dogma. Um, it's called la regla de ocha, la regla de palo, um, voodoo. In this case, I'm speaking on all the, the ATRs, African traditional religions. Um, and that's what they had to do. These Oh, it's man-made dogma. It's called la regla de ocha. For Orisha. La regla de ocha. The rule of Orisha. There are rules. And the idea that because a faith or tradition has rules, then it's horrible. And my spiritually doesn't have rules. You can't put rules on spirit. Uh, I can just talk to any Orisha I want at any time. I can do whatever I want at any time because you can't box spirit. You can't put spirit in a box. That's not the point. There are rules. There are certain ways, certain protocols to follow. There are certain ways to speak to Arisha, not through tarot cards. There are certain ways to have a, uh, you know, a shrine of Arisha. There's certain ways to crown someone, to have someone receive a certain Arisha. And to bypass all of those protocols, um, for me, means to spit in the face of all the slaves that took the trouble to bring the faith over. You know, some of the slaves um, swallowed some of the secrets because they wanted to bring, well, they, that was their faith. They need to bring some of the the, um, the slaves, like, swallowed the otanes, the rocks, the secrets of the Orisha. Put some uh, special, like, uh, seeds that didn't exist in Cuba or the New World. They put the seeds, they put secrets, and they weaved it into their hair. Um, to say that you don't need any of those traditions, tradition, hierarchy, protocols, rules, things that exist in Africa to this day and exist in all these ATRs. Um, it's to spit in the face of all the people that went through all the trouble to preserve the faith. La regla ocha, the rule of Orisha. They are our rules. You can't get past that. Oh no, yeah, I don't follow religion, man-made religion. Well, guess what? Where we are man, we are physical beings. Yes, the spirit world is the spirit world. But when we consecrate Arisha, we use physical things 
to consecrate spiritual beings. I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with following tradition. Um, but I can just go on. on. I definitely want to do a whole video on this <clears throat> by itself. But let's continue. I want to show you guys exactly um, what to look out for. Okay, and I want to give you guys a visual. Okay. Put some Florida water on my hands, and you are about to get your fluid myoritia reading, huh? Yes, 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 yes. That's what you know. <laughs> now, so the way the way it works, gotta make a disclaimer. Not a disclaimer, but I gotta tell everybody how it works. So, so now the the way this particular reading works, because this is all about helping people. So, this will be the Orisha. So, you're going to get three Orishas. Because okay. everybody has three. Not just one. You got one that covers your head. Then you got one that covers your actions. And then you got one that covers your destiny. People don't understand that about Orishas. They think, okay, okay you just have the one at the top. And that's how you got to live your life. You got to act, think, feel, and all that stuff. Now, each Orisha can come to the top of your head at any given time in order to help you through your problem, your situation, whatever. If you need courage to fight, they're going to send you Ogun. Ogun going to take over for that time of your life when you need to fight. If you need to be beautiful, love yourself, you're going to come into Oshun. Male or female, don't matter. If you need to cleanse yourself, rid yourself of something, to just be more, you know, get rid of some bad habits, then you're going to run into Yamoya. So, this reading is designed to tell you the Orisha that's governing your head right now. Typically in this reading, the Orisha that's governing your head, this will be your Orisha for here on out. Okay. The other two may change and shift, but this Orisha will be the one that will basically be on your head from here to eternity. Now, others may take over when you need them to, but this is the one that basically deal with your whole life path and everything of that nature. You got it? Okay, I got it. Okay, so there is a lot to unravel here, but I have a whole video that I've done. I might do it again, uh, just because, like, it, it, you, you can look me up. Elkin Kisudor, who is my guardian, Arisha. And basically, it just talks about the two ways to find out someone's guardian, Arisha, a.k.a. <clears throat> which Arisha governs over your, um, your lady, your ori, el lady, ori, your head. Um... I don't know where this guy got his information. You don't have three crowns or the idea of one that governs your head, one that governs your actions, and another one that governs your destiny. Um, like I said, you know, just use logic. You know, I'm asking you, how many, he how many heads do you have between your shoulders? Oh, you have one? Okay. Well, then you have one Arisha that governs your one head. It's not rocket science, okay? I know, I know uh, Yoruba spirituality and Lukumil Regle Ocha can get pretty damn deep, but it's just, it's one in one. One Orisha sits on top of your one head. Um, I even asked um, an elder, I said, what if a person had, I know at this point you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking, what if a person literally has two heads that does exist? Siamese twins, um, a person has another head coming out of them or two separate bodies conjoined twins. From what I was told um, by this elder, you still have two heads. So you have two crowns to put. Even the, the body isn't as important as the head. So if you have, if there's another head popping out of my neck right here, well then you'd put, um, the friggin' Babaluaye on this head and then put, they drop the Guardian Arisha for that head and say, okay, so this one's Babaluaye and this one's Yemaya. Let's do it. Okay? Um, but yeah, so the two ways to determine, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm you know, let's do this quick. In a nutshell, because <clears throat> still more, more video I want to show you of how it progresses and what not to do, what not to get yourself involved in. Um, by the way, like what you're seeing, you know, I, I don't talk about, you know, when it comes to people's prices, everything's set. Um, but, you know, this is something that he charges for. 
I believe is like $150 for 20 minute reading to find out what your gardener niche is. Um, at a real bajada, it's called a bajada. De tu, um, how do you say in Spanish? Bajada de tu angel guardian, a guardian angel. Bajada de tu guardian angel. The lowering or the bringing down of your guardian orisha or your guardian uh, angel. There's two ways. Um, a way, both of which are, they're not controversial, but you know, the whole Ifa versus Oba Oriate, you know, blah, blah. but Mere de Lugun. <clears throat> How that works is you have your godparent, um, and the shells of your godparents' Orisha, the Yemaya, Oba Talaya, Wow, Bono, Chosi, Friend, it could be anybody. Um, as long as they have the cowrie shells, the Dilogun, that godparent would take those shells that belong to their crown into the hands of a competent Obaoriate. Um, someone whose hands are, are neutral and have no, no stake in who the person's crown is. Um, and then using those shells, they determine, okay, um... Your gardening Risha. It says here we, we they do it by the Odus, or you know they always ask who do you think this your Aijados um, gardening Risha is. But in a nutshell, it's using the cowrie shells, the Mere de Lugum, of the person's crown. In a regular reading, a person always uh, uses Elegua, the Inamahada, to find out and determine your crowning or Risha that governs over your one head are the shells of the person's, uh, of the godparent's crown. If it happens to be a legua, then it's a legua. But it could be Ochun, Ogun, Ochosi, Yemaya, um, Obatala, whoever. And when you're crowned, each, um, you know, your uh, each Arisha should get their shells because they speak in, uh, in a that. But that's a whole different topic. So next, the second way I'm putting up for, I caught myself, the second way of uh, determining who governs over your, your head is through Ifa, and that is done with the Ikin. Um, Ikin, Ikin, someone correct me. I'm not sure which one the emphasis is on. Ikin, nuts. Basically, they're just nuts. Um, and it's over a table of Ifa, a wooden table of Ifa. And um, that again, using the Odun's of what comes out, and that's done doing a whole model of the Aruna ceremony, the three-day ceremony. Um, and they bring down, as it said, they bring down your garden and reach out. Um, both ways are legit. You know, some say Oriates can't do it. Only only Orumila was present during creation. And then, but there's two ways to determine someone's garden Risha. In this case, use logic, okay? I, I, did, I did my research before doing this video. The Orisha tarot cards, the earliest ones that I could find, the Orisha tarot cards were created uh, in 1990. This video is from 2019, 2020, 2021, I don't know. But they were created in 1990, these Arisha cards. If bringing down someone's garden Arisha and determining someone's garden Arisha um, is through the use of tarot cards and what did people use before 1990? What did the slaves use? What, did the Af what do the Africans use till this day? Uh, I can tell you that the slaves did not have pretty uh, printed cardboard um, pieces to throw. They did not use cardboard printouts to determine your guardian Arisha. And I will show you how this guy does it. Um, he has a whole method. Um, but the slaves did not, they did not use cardboard cutouts with pretty pictures with ink and everything on them. Uh, they used nature. They used nuts, they used wood, and they used shells. Um, when I say nuts and wood, I mean the ikin nuts, and I mean the, the wood, the table of Ifa is made out of wood. Okay, they're going, they got them in the hand, boom, two, I put a number one. Boom, one, I put a number two, and they keep doing that. The guardian, and they do it with the Dilogun, um, they, they have it in, the, you know, in both cases, you lower your head. But they, they throw the shells and you have the two things in your hand, yes, no, you know, 
Um, but it's not with tarot cards. Anyone who says that they're going to determine your ratio with tarot cards has no idea what they're doing, is completely legitimate, is, everything you're hearing is completely invalid. The Orisha do not speak in tarot cards. They do not speak through cardboard. That's essentially what a tarot card is. Not to devalue it, because we all have one of those, a lot of people have gypsies and whatnot that speak through the Bahada and you know voodoo spirits that use the, um, the regular playing cards with the king and the ace of spades and all that. That's legit, but the Orisha speak through nature. Um, the nuts, the ikin nuts, the table of Ifa, the cowrie shells, not through cardboard, okay? That is not how the Orisha speak. And to say, oh, it's Orisha speaking through this, it's completely legitimate, okay? So let's continue. Do I have permission to cut your card? Spirit, spirit, ancestors, guys. I accept you and allow the Orishas to come out. Orisha, we need you. Come out and assist. This is your daughter. She wants to know who's over there. So whichever Orisha who's crowning, come out. 13 cards. First Orisha. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. Your first Orisha is Oshimaru. Oshimaru? Oshimaru, Oshimaru, Oshimaru. It's, a, it's depending on how you say it. So now we're going to go to the second one. I already began the yawning. That means the spirit coming through. Uh, that means that spirit is coming through, that I'm tapping into your energy and I got to break some barriers. From around you and it tires it tires me out pretty good. And imagine I'm doing like nine, ten of these a day. Wow. Oh, it's, am it's amazing I stay so young. The top of your head, the origin that's crowned at the top of your head is Abba. So Abba is the origin that's mainly over relationships. If you're single, she'll So basically what the guy was saying, um, to finish off a sentence, because I, I didn't record it um, all the way. Um, oh, because your crown is, is Oba. He said Abba. It's Oba. Um, Oba Nani. Oh, and the last one was not um, Achimari or Achimara, Achimaru. Um, Ochumare. Ochumare and Oba Nani are their names. Um, so what he was saying is uh, she, the... Oba is the Orisha of uh, relationships, and the reason why your relationships suck is because she's your crown. And she's gonna, at some point, he says, he, that Oba hates men, and that she would actually have her daughters be lesbian, like, like if you're guarding Orisha, you're a woman, you're guarding Orisha, is, is Oba, Nani, that um, she would like push you to be more toward. Uh, be lesbian because she hates men. Um, without getting too much into detail as to who is who, I don't. I, uh, if you notice, I haven't touched on. Oh, Obatala is this one, or who is Obatala? Who is Ochosi? That's just not. And there's just so much information out there, but um, not a lot of information on Ochumare. He says that Ochumare is like a serpent healer god or something. Um, Ochumare does represent the uh, you know the serpent, but Ochumare is uh, is the rainbow. Ochumare is uh, the crown of Jemaya. Some say one of her husbands. You know, everybody's with everybody. You know, Mwampataki, Jemaya is um, with Orichaoko. Another one, of course, she's with Obatala. Um, another one, she's with uh, Jemaya Okuti. She's with Ogun. And then Obanani. Um, she's not just this crybaby who cut off her ear and is just in a perpetual state of depression. Obanani is a warrior. She is the, the record keeper of the cemetery. She's the one that, with her libreta, with her book, and she registers all the bodies that come into the cemetery. Um, some say she's the grave digger. Um, 
and you know she she lives in a cave um even i got you owns you know he has a place in caves but obanani lives in that cave and she also lives uh at the river you know so she's not just this depressed woman that oh if oba is your crown then you need a receiver when uh, don't get crowned her. Uh, let's put Ochun on your head instead so that you're more of a happy person. And that's a whole debate about Oro or direct, which I'm not getting into. Um, or if you're going to receive her and she's not your crown, the receiver, and when you're like going to die, like in your 80s, because she's just going to destroy relationships and she just hates men and she hates relationship. People need to remember that Obanani is also the relationship of marriage. So why would she destroy what you have yes if you're in an abusive relationship and you're in a relationship where it's just not conducive for you and your health and your wealth and happiness and you know what you need for yourself then yeah it could be like okay word so maybe it didn't work out because obanani pushed that man away or woman you know um but Oba, obanani is a warrior so much so that she rivals um she rivals the other male orishas um and most of all, she's um, she's a teacher. She is the one who educated all the other Rishas how to read and write. She's the Risha of navigation, um, thus making her the owner of the compass. Um, but she is a teacher first and foremost. Um, and she is a homemaker. She is the ultimate wife. She knows how to please her man. She knows how to keep a husband. The whole story about her cutting off her ear, that's one pataki, but her story doesn't end there. She's not just this, oh, Obanani's your crown, and so well, let's not put her on your head because she's just this depressed broad. She is, she's a queen, she's a warrior that rivals the men. She, um, so to say that like uh, her brother is Ogun, and she lived a lot with Ogun, and he taught her how to fight. Um, but Obanani taught Chango, how to fight, how to use um, the cutlass or the machete or whatever, you know. So she's not just this depressed broad, but that's basically what he was saying. Oh, your relationships suck because Obanani rules your head and that's why your relationships suck. No, your relationships suck because you're being a total bruh, okay? A straight dick, okay? Or he's being a dick. Okay, but it's not because of who you have on your head. Okay, people have got to stop blaming all their issues, their financial issues, their relationship issues, um, or their shortcomings over who rules their head. I'm trying to go. That's why I cheated on my girl. I'm about to lie. That's why I'm crazy. I'm old by nani. That's why I hate men and I'm just depressed. No, you just you're just a shitty person, or you're a good person who needs to work on themselves. I'm Ochun, I like the finer things in life. No, bitch, you're broke. Not because Ochun likes the finer things in life, but because you don't know how to hold down a dollar and you want to go out every damn weekend. Don't be blaming on Ochun for your financial issues. Whole separate topic. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end it at uh, trying to expound on what else he was talking about. Um, he engages in uh, like spell magic with, with Changbo and all the Arishas. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pause it. For, I'm going to show you this. Check it out. So basically what you're looking at right now is a trabajo for Chango that he, um, that he, he has in the video and I believe he charges people for this on his website. Um, keep in mind the man's not crowned. Um, but as you see, there are voodoo, Haitian voodoo vives on a table for working that belongs to Chango that I don't even recognize. I don't even know what the heck this is. Um, with candles and stuff, this is just straight up Sancocho, Voodoo Vives belong on the floor, um, he is not crowned, he does not have Chango, this is Hoodoo, this is Hoodoo mixed with Voodoo, mixed with Wicca, the idea of putting all this stuff on the tables, Wicca, um, and no legitimate, um, Olocha or Ugan Mambo would, um, validate this at all. Yeah, so I just want to show you guys that. So I, I had said that no legitimate Ugan, Mambo, Olocha, Yelocha, Babolocha, uh, Babalao, whatever, would approve of this. Voodoo Vives belong on the floor. Um, works for Chango. 
um, would be in front of a shrine, an actual consecrated Chang'o. And there's no such thing as spell work. No such thing as spell work with the Orishas. You do Ebo and Adimu. Um, but this is just straight up Sankocho. Again, like I said in the intro, all these videos have nothing to do with the personality of this of these people. Um, uh, he seems like a really genuine, sweet guy. Unfortunately, um, what he's showing out there is just simply not traditional Ocha. It's not La Regla de Ocha. It's not voodoo for him. Uh, you know, he said like he doesn't subscribe to being a part of an Ile. It's just there's a horrible people, and so he doesn't want to be a part of that. Um, I totally get it. At the same time, um, reading a bunch of books doesn't give you any licencia, any um, li license or authority to do any of this stuff because you don't have a che. Um, not to say that you don't have Ache at all. We all have Ache. The fact that you're alive means you have Ache. You have the breath of Olofi inside of you. Um, and we're all children of Obatala. We all have Ache. But what I mean is, you know, stay in your lane. I don't speak about stuff about what goes on in crownings or things that are too, too deep because I'm not crowned. Um, and granted, just some stuff are just more secretive than others. Um, now... I do know a decent amount for being an Aboisha, meaning I only have my, my warriors, and that's the step that I'm done at as of now. Um, uh, but I'm not... The difference between me and him, because both of us are in the same boat. I don't know if he has his, his necklaces or his warriors or anything, but I know my lane. And I'm not saying I'm better better than anybody. He seems like a sweet guy, like I said. But the fact is, whether knowingly or unknowingly, um, on purpose or in ignorance, he is presenting to people fact what is not. Um, there is no such thing as reading people with tarot cards. There is no such thing as cleaning yourself with Florida water before doing uh, finding out someone's crown. Um, you have to do things in person. The things, the implements, the ikin, the shells have to be presented to the person's ori. Um, because you want to find out someone's crown orisha, you need to present it to their crown. Um, cardboard, tarot cards are not used. Um, this man is not crowned. I don't think he has any ceremony at all. He just says he's an expert tarot reader. Um, and tarot has its, has its part. You know, like I said, people have gypsy spirits and just, you know, madamas and whatnot that read the cards. And even voodoo spirits, sometimes, you know, they come down and read cards while the person's possessed. Um, but a true voodoo reading is when the loa possesses the person and speaks through the person, through the caballo, through the horse, and speaks to you. A true 21 divisions reading is when the miterio possesses the, you know, mounts the horse and speaks to you. A true orisha reading is when uh, a person who's crowned, a competent olocha, um, uh, you know, read you through the Dilogun. That's how the Orishas speak, through the Dilogun, through the Ekwele of the Babalao, the Olu, through the Ikin on the table of Ifa, through Obi, um, the shells. Um, a true reading in Palo Mayombe, the, the Impungo speaks through the shells. So there's different ways that each of these spirits in their respective traditions speak. Um, and tarot cards is not one of them. This guy is not crowned. He has no... Licencia. Um, so everything that he does, it's essentially hoodoo. Um, hoodoo, I can't speak too much on it, but hoodoo is a sancocho of spell work and witchcraft, um, which lacks dogma. And it's just, what does your muerto tell you to do? Um, it's, it's brujeria, basically. It's brujeria, it's witchcraft, it's hoodoo. But voodoo is structured. Voodoo, when you put those vevets, that's a portal to that specific loa, and it doesn't go on a table. Um, and putting a work that's for Chango on what belongs to Voodoo, granted, Chango does exist in Voodoo. Uh, you'd be surprised actually how many um Orisha uh exist in Voodoo, they just don't call them Orisha, they call them uh, uh, loa, 
you know, even in 21 division, you know, they got Ogu Batala. Um, uh, there's there's a, a lot of interconnectivity, but let's keep it 100, guys. La Regla de Ocha, La, la Santeria, Lukumi, Yoruba, Ifa. If I were to just, you know, just lump them as one, just for the concepts of this video, that is one lane. Ocha is Ocha, Santeria is Santeria, Palo is Palo. Voodoo, Haitian voodoo is voodoo. Taking an element from here, from I wanna, I wanna honor Chango from Orisha while putting him on a a voodoo, um, a voodoo veve that's on a table, and that's that's an element of Wicca of having altars. That's Wicca. Um, Epiritimo, you know. Also, you know, you have this stuff on tables, but you don't do witchcraft at your boba. There's a saying I don't know it in Spanish, but essentially means you don't. You don't shit where you work, something like that. Um, or you don't shit at the table, meaning you're not supposed to be doing brujeria at your boba. Like, you're supposed to keep it clean and white and your candles. And there's no, like, trabajos to hurt anyone or, you know. There's no, like, witchcraft on your boba. So, you have chango, belongs to ocha, on the table because it's that working for chango. You have uh, voodoo veves on the table. Uh, firmas veves that belong voodoo that have nothing to do with chango as an orisha maybe as a loa he has his own veve but as an orisha you chango orisha voodoo veves and then number three you have all of it on a table as that's how they do in wicca the irony being wicca's european um and all these people talk about getting back to their african roots when they are using mad european um, English practices. Um, so mode it be, you know, a real, like when they do the friggin' the shells, the equile, the ikin, you know, it's not take some cards in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So mode it be, so mode it be, so mode it be. If you hear that and the person said they're going to do your bahada or your finding your guardian angel, you run. You bet you got to hear some stuff that you don't even freaking understand. And so these guys, they do it so fast. They got the freaking shells. And they, these guys, they do it crazy fast. Um, but it's speaking the Arisha's language. You know, these are just protocols. These are traditions. He's not crowned. He has no ceremony done. And he's doing workings with these spirits um and uh and he's he's just he's engaged in illegitimate practices guys that's the that's you know that's just what i'm trying to say he's engaged in Ill illegitimate practices um that are not recognized by the formal uh societies the yoruba association by any legitimate um respectable ile munanso societe this is all Sancocho. Straight up. Florida water, that's a Piritimo. And they do use Florida water and Voodoo, 21 divisions. The it, it's just Sancocho. Sancocho, guys, for anybody who don't speak Spanish, I'm not perfect either. Sancocho is a kind of stew in which you put chicken and beef and pig and you don't put fish, but all these meats. And it's a mixture. Of whatever you happen to have on hand. If I were to equate it to more European, it'd be like a shepherd's pie. What he's got here, and what a lot of people got here these days, is a shepherd's pie of spirituality where they take the elements of Orisha, Voodoo, Hoodoo, Obia, European witchcraft, wizardry, crystals, and moon cycles, and Greek mythology, and, and Egyptian gods, and they throw it all into one kitchen sink, say, I'm, I have black ancestry and so I don't need to get initiated in nothing and I can just, my spirituality is my own. And even white, I'm not just pointing out just black. I mean like anybody, black, Hispanic, white, I, I never make this into a, a race issue. I'm not talking about that. Um, but what I'm saying is because of my cultural identity, I have the right to bypass protocols that have been in place for a lot longer than I've even been alive um, and just bypass it because it's my right to do so. And so I don't need to get crowned to charge people to do trabajos with Chango 
because there's the difference be, there's a difference between and that's a whole video a difference between being a devotee or a servant of XYZ and being a priest or priestess or locha y alocha babalocha o luo um babalao ugan mambo brujo de 21 división and just being a devotee and a, a servitor uh, a servant um they both have their place but a servitor has a servant and a devotee has only so much licencia to do so much meaning when you want to do a work with Ochun and you got to do Ebo, not witchcraft, a brujeria, when you have to do Ebo and it says you got to take a pumpkin to the river and speak to Ochun, you can do that, but you got to go to her area of nature. Not, um, or in some cases, you put it to a carrera de cobre. That's how it does, that's how it was done in the old days too. But not charge people, I'm going to do a love spell with Ochun. I'm going to charge you $500 so you can get the man of your dream that I'm going to work it with Ochun and have all these freaking uh, rose quartz crystals around a nice pretty picture of Ochun with some sunflowers and a yellow candle and put you in a jar with the guy that you want to get with and put you in a jar full of honey and cinnamon and cloves because that's what Ochun likes. You put it on, you put a pink candle on top of it and you say, Ochun, my mother, I call upon thee, so mote it be, I invoke thee. In the name of the north, south, east, and west, and the moon is in this cycle, and the guy have the the, the friggin uh the, the what's those fish flying around in Greek mythology? They have no licencia for that, and that's just a bunch of more sancocho. Okay, tradition and protocol are necessary. This is called la regla de ocho. If you don't like rules, then don't be a part of any of these African traditions. La regla de palo, la regla de ocho, voodoo. There are protocols. There is hierarchy. There is respecting for the elders, there's respect of the old ways. And if you don't, if you can't stay in the heat, then stay out of the kitchen. Yes, there are wolves, but not everybody is an asshole, okay? Um, and when you find yourself a good house, a munanzo, if it's palo, or societe, if it's 21 divisions, or if it's voodoo, when you find that good house, stick with it, learn, respect protocols, respect hierarchy, and you work your way up because all these faiths, it's not like other faiths where you just know it all. It's you the more you don't learn more until you're initiated more um it does offend our american sensibilities because we want to know it all but that's how it is because that's how it was you couldn't know everything so it's initiatory based and that and that's respect you respect people that are in higher positions than you um spiritually with what they've received and where they are in the rank so if you're an aleo you're an aleo there's aleo then aborisha then Olocha. And then if you were, you know, you know, Oba Oriate, if you're a man or if you're in, you know, a different section of Mabala Olufa. But just to keep it simple, we have everyone else. We have Aleo at the same level. Stranger, it means stranger or outsider. Aleo. Then you have Aborisha. Then you have Olocha. And then I guess you'd be Babalocha y Olocha if you have other people crowned and whatnot. So I got this guy here, the Baron. He's an aleo. He's an outsider, stranger. That's just what the word aleo means. No shots fired to him. But if you have um, a, you know, this is an aleo. And this is an aleo. This is the barren guy. If he's claiming to be able to do stuff that a, that an oriate can and do works and change people's lives with, with witchcraft and call it working with chango and not calling it hudu and calling it like it is, then you know it's it's uh it's deceptive it's deceptive and i don't think he knows that he's doing what he's doing i think he feels like he's just following his spiritual path and that he doesn't need to follow protocols and traditions but like i said i for me it's personally spitting in the face of all the slaves that went through the trouble to keep these faiths alive they respected protocol when they see, when they come across an elder, they Mofori Vale. Mofori Vale is not just an ocha. It's something that's still done in, in Africa today as a sign of respect. You come up to a, you're meeting some old woman, you throw yourself. Regardless of whether she's crowned or not, Mofori Vale simply is a, a formal, formal, formal way of greeting someone. Um, and depending on how old the person is, you can either throw yourself all the way down or just a quick bow or you just tap your hand on the floor um, but it's a sign of I'm prostrating myself before you. 
no different than how the Chinese, you know, you know, and I, I had a, a Chinese friend that was like, this is, this means um, you respect, you know, you're bowing like this. One hand means you respect them a lot. And then two hands is like if you're like bowing to the emperor or someone super duper important, you know. These are, you know, these are rules, these are protocols, these are hierarchies. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think the notion of rules being a bad word is ridiculous. Um, and these are practices that were practiced by the slaves and respected by the slaves. And suddenly you come along, some 30, 40 year old dude who feels just entitled to bypass all of what your ancestors um, respected and engaged in, in honoring um, the Orisha the proper way and following protocols and all that. But I can go on and on. I hope I'm making my point clear. Um, thank you for watching, guys. This is just episode one. I really want to get your guys' feedback. This is my first video. I know it's hella long. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know um, if there's anybody else that you feel like, yo, Julio, you really need to check this dude out or this chick out because she's just off the scales. You know, she's over here dropping people's guard in Arisha with... Uh, I don't know. She's uh, what? What? What are some crazy things that that people do? Um, maybe like, oh, she just determines your um, your guardian Orisha by just sitting with a glass of water and a, and a candle. I said, so she's using a pitimo to say who's on your head. Okay, well that's BS. Things like that. If there's anybody else who you like, them, there's such a sancochero or a charlatan. Um, or they just don't know and they're still just showing bad information, let me know and I'll definitely consider doing a video on them. Um, and if you guys haven't seen my other videos, uh, two videos, legitimate YouTubers that do have good quality content, then check that out. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this is all new to me. I've never put anything like this together before. I know it's long. I know it's not great quality. It's just, I'm just a guy with his phone who's passionate about what he does. So um, if you stuck around this long, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. And uh, ah, this was a pain in the ass to make, guys. You don't even know. Um, oh, and definitely email me, elconquistadormusic1 at gmail.com for my books. I do sell Orisha books for you guys to learn the songs. All the YouTube links and all the lyrics and everything are included. Super duper easy for anybody who wants to learn and do the songs. So um, thank you guys. I'm going to upload this and um, let me know what you guys think. Even if you don't like it, let me know what you had some beef with, you know. Um, and please uh, subscribe, 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 guys. Um, uh, the more subscribers I get, you know, my numbers go up. So I can be more prevalent in the community because honestly, guys, like these people that do this Sancocho, Huru, Mixture, Porqueria, they got mad people. Like look in the comments. If you check out this dude that I showed you, you're going to see people going, oh my God, this is wonderful. I want a reading. I want a reading. And it's like for people to do bajadas with tarot cards and all those people are like, oh my God, I can't. That really resonated with me. Oh my God. Chango is really speaking really strong here. Oh. And, like, these people are getting, like, mad views for BS. And it's not just me looking for views because I'm a YouTuber. But it's like, damn, yo, for the few of us, Tata Oriate, Shadow of Wolves, I see a bias. Um, freaking Membesito and, you know, Omi, um, Omo Odun Odileke. You know, we're small YouTubers. And we're legit. And I stand by that shit. Um, we're legit. But these people that friggin' do porqueria and straight up sancocho and dropping people's garden and reaching with tarot cards and mixing with them and all this stuff. Talking about Greek mythology and moon cycles and friggin' one lady throwing chamalongos on a table of Ifa with numbers on it. They got mad views, yo. So help your boy out. And subscribe, okay? Hit that like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for even more sweet content, okay? This is your boy, Elvin Kisador. Thank you for watching episode one and be in tune for episode two. And 
and uh, let me know what you think, okay? Bendición, ire o mo, ire o wo, ire o mo, wo, ire o mo, ire o ma, ire o blah, blah, blah. Ire a riku baba wa elese, let's see. Elese olofi, the one who made this all possible. Thank you. Olofi. Ache.